Hello welcome to another video, please like share and subscribe for more amazing story. True God in Another Worlds, Tensira X Tibate, by Tempest underscore King underscore 20. Chapter 45 The First Day PT.1 Rimarupav Justice, is a complex and multifaceted concept that serves as the foundation of a just and fair society. It is a principle that embodies the idea of equality, fairness, and accountability for one's actions. However, the perception of justice can vary greatly among individuals, shaped by their beliefs, values, and personal experiences. For some, justice is a means to maintain order and ensure that wrongs are made right. It acts as a deterrent to prevent crime and wrongdoing, while also serving as a way to protect the rights and freedoms of individuals. On the other hand, there are those who see justice as a tool used to exert power and control over others, leading to disparities and inequalities within society. The definition of justice is not set in stone, as each person may have their own interpretation of what is fair and just. What one person sees as a fitting consequence for a crime, another may view as too severe or lenient. This diversity in perspectives can lead to disagreements and conflicts when it comes to enacting justice. Ultimately, the concept of justice is a fluid and evolving one, influenced by the values and beliefs of society as a whole. It is a balancing act between enforcing consequences for wrongdoings and ensuring that individuals are treated fairly and with respect. However, it is important to acknowledge that what one person sees as justice may be perceived as injustice by another, highlighting the complexity and subjectivity of this fundamental principle. As the room erupted into applause, the vibrant energy slowly dissipated, and the students scattered, my mind shifted gears, focusing on the tasks ahead. The formation of the committee was an important milestone but its ultimate success rested on the abilities of its members to collaboratively work together and effectively communicate. I turned towards my fellow committee members, a content smile gracing my face as I observed the room, ensuring everything was in order. Well, that went exceptionally well, I commented, my eyes scanning the now empty space. Claire beamed at me, her bright eyes brimming with joy. Your speech was truly inspiring, she responded. The students will undeniably feel reassured knowing that a seasoned committee will be looking out for them. Art chimed in, his voice thoughtful, indeed, Mr. Justice. Your speech exuded a sense of justice that resonated with everyone present. I shrugged, contemplating his words. Humans are inherently drawn to simplicity, and justice is a concept that provides them with security and a sense of fairness. While it may not be the sole motivator driving my actions, I do recognize its significance in maintaining order and harmony within a community. Art's gaze sharpened, curiosity twinkling in his eyes. Is that what you preach in Tempest? He inquired. I paused, amusement dancing in my eyes, as I observed the earnestness of his inquiry. No, my brother, I responded, my tone filled with a touch of enigma. I do not need to resort to such trivial words among my subjects. Let us not forget, most of my people are, well, monsters. Concepts like justice hold little sway in their existence. Understanding washed over Art's face, and he nodded, acknowledging the complexity of the situation. I turned to face Sylvie, who had been sitting patiently on my shoulder throughout the meeting. Sylvie let out a soft chuckle, her tiny eyes sparkling with amusement. It seems like you can't escape your duties, Papa, she said, her voice tinged with affectionate teasing. Are you making fun of your father now? I asked a playful grin on my face. Sylvie nodded, her tiny head bobbing up and down, her small form radiating a carefree energy. Oh, absolutely, she replied, her voice filled with mirth and innocence that only she could possess. I couldn't help but laugh at her response. Well, I hope you're prepared to take on some responsibilities too, Syl, I said, reaching up to scratch her behind the ears. You're part of this committee now too, my little guardian. E.H., I did not agree on that. I'll tell Mama Sylvia and Mama Seal about it, Sylvie protested, her surprise evident, but before we could continue our lighthearted banter, the student council approached us, diverting our attention. That was an exceptional speech, Re, Lily said, her hazel eyes sparkling with genuine admiration as she stepped forward, her long brown hair cascading over her shoulders. Tessia stood by her side. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed the student council secretary frowning and staring at me with thinly disguised disdain. Thank you, Lily, I replied, a genuine smile playing on my lips. Tessia joined in, her voice brimming with curiosity, so are you going to do anything else? I glanced at Art, who stood beside me, and then back at Tessia, 
Unfortunately, there's something I have to do, and I have to guide Art to his next chapter, so I'll have to leave it up to Claire, I explained, gently tugging Art's arm and waving to the rest of the group as we started walking away. Okay, Captain, Claire's cheerful voice chimed in, her vibrant red hair falling in waves around her shoulders. Her smile radiated warmth and confidence. However, I couldn't ignore the flicker of annoyance in Lily's eyes as she shot me a meaningful look. We exited the bustling hall and strolled down the corridor towards our classroom, the sound of chatter and laughter echoing around us. Art's skeptical expression caught my attention, and he voiced his doubts. Really? Are you seriously going to leave everything in Claire's hands? I chuckled, amused by his disbelief. Trust me, Art, Claire is more than capable of handling things in my absence. Besides, she has the full support of the rest of the committee. Arching an eyebrow. Art remained unconvinced. But what if things go wrong? What if Claire needs guidance or assistance? I shrugged, a confident smile playing on my lips. If she needs any help, she can always reach out to me. But I believe it's important to give others the opportunity to take charge and grow. It's not about one person doing everything. It's about teamwork and collaboration. Art rolled his eyes, his tone tinged with sarcasm. So basically, you just don't want to take over because it's boring? I chuckled again, enjoying our playful banter. Was that clear? I asked, feigning innocence. Sylvie perched on my head instead of my shoulder, couldn't contain her laughter. Crystal clear, Papa. She chimed in. So what are you going to do now? Art asked, his voice carrying over the bustling hallway as we approached his classroom. The cacophony of students' voices reverberated off the walls, creating a lively atmosphere. Well, Ellie will be arriving soon, I replied a subtle smile tugging at the corners of my lips. The anticipation of her arrival filled me with warmth. Huh? Isn't that too early? I thought she was coming in the afternoon, Art responded, his eyes widening with surprise. He seemed genuinely taken aback by the unexpected change of plans. That was the original plan, but she couldn't contain her excitement, so, she insisted on coming now, I explained, my voice tinged with both amusement and affection. As we reached a stop outside his classroom door, the hallway seemed to momentarily quiet down, the air thick with anticipation. It was a brief respite before the chaos of the school day engulfed us. Then see you later, Art waved as he reached for the doorknob, a hint of curiosity in his eyes, and let me know how it goes with Ellie. I nodded, returning his wave as he disappeared into the classroom. As the sound of the classroom door closing resonated in the hallway, I turned on my heels and set off towards Cynthia's office. As I approached Cynthia's office, the distinctive sound of her rapid typing reached my ears, reverberating through the hallway. I approached the polished wooden door, its surface adorned with a small silver nameplate, and lightly wrapped my knuckles against it before cautiously pushing it open. Good morning, Cynthia, I greeted her warmly, a genuine smile stretching across my face as our eyes met. Blinking away from her work, Cynthia looked up, her expression transforming into one of pleasant surprise. Her eyes crinkled at the corners as she mirrored my smile. Good morning, Rimuru, she responded, her voice carrying a touch of warmth amidst the sound of papers shifting under her hands. Is there something I can help you with? I took a step closer and leaned against the doorway, reveling in the amiable atmosphere that surrounded us. I just wanted to let you know that my sister Ellie will be arriving earlier than planned, I explained, my voice tinged with anticipation. She got really excited about today and insisted on coming now. Understanding flashed across Cynthia's face as she listened attentively. Her smile never wavered, no problem at all, Rimuru. I'm sure we can adjust my schedule for the day, she reassured me, her voice soothing. Thank you, Cynthia, I said gratefully, as I glanced at the papers scattered on Cynthia's meticulously organized desk. My curiosity getting the better of me, I couldn't help but ask, are you waiting for someone? Cynthia's grin transformed into a wry one mischief dancing in her eyes. Leaning back in her chair, she crossed her arms, exuding a relaxed confidence. Yes, there was someone who was supposed to be here, she divulged, the corners of her lips curling mischievously. But apparently they had some personal stuff going on, so they were running late. My interest thoroughly piqued, I abandoned the doorway and settled myself onto the plush couch stationed against the wall, directly across from Cynthia's desk. Just as the silence threatened to stretch into a void, a distinct knock resounded through the office, interrupting the buildup of suspense. Cynthia's face instantly lit up, 
her playful tone carrying a hint of triumph as she called out, Talk about the devil, come in. The door opened with a soft click, revealing Lily standing in the doorway. Her presence exuded confidence, her posture poised and graceful. Good morning, Lily greeted Cynthia, her voice carrying a sense of familiarity and respect. Accompanying Lily was another girl, her presence less conspicuous in comparison to Lily's vibrant aura. It took a moment before I could properly focus my attention on her as Lily approached me. Lily's smile, which had once been warm and kind, now took on a different quality. It remained on her lips, but there was a hint of challenge in her eyes as she addressed me. Rimuru, she said, her voice deliberate, drawing out each syllable of my name. Didn't you promise me that you wouldn't burden Claire with unnecessary tasks? She maintained her smile, but there was a hint of something stern behind it. Surprised. A bead of sweat slowly trailed down my temple as my eyebrows furrowed in confusion. I instinctively averted my gaze, not wanting to be caught in Lily's piercing stare. Well, you see, it's just that Ellie is coming soon, and I felt that it was my duty to greet her properly, I stuttered, my voice laced with awkwardness. Lily narrowed her eyes, her smile becoming even more enigmatic. The skepticism in her voice was palpable as she questioned me, is that really the reason, Rimuru? Her words hung in the air, heavy with challenge. I panicked, desperately trying to change the subject. How about you introduce the girl standing behind you? I suggested, my voice tinged with nervousness. My eyes darted to Cynthia who was observing the interaction with a sarcastic smile, clearly amused by my attempt to divert the conversation. Momentarily thrown off balance by my comment, Lily turned around, gesturing for the girl to step forward. With a grace that demanded attention, the girl gracefully moved towards us. Her blue hair flowed down her back, glistening in the sunlight that poured through the office windows. The midnight blue hue of her hair created a striking contrast against her fair complexion, accentuating her otherworldly beauty. Her features were delicate and ethereal, possessing a timeless quality that captivated anyone who dared to look. A mysterious smile played on her lips, a rosy pink shade that was both alluring and enigmatic. Her high cheekbones added a touch of sophistication to her youthful appearance. But it was her eyes that held my attention captive, deep red orbs, reminiscent of the color of freshly spilled blood. They held an intensity, a depth that seemed to penetrate one's very soul. As Lily motioned for the girl to step forward and introduce herself, her voice carried a melodic quality that spoke of both respect and authority. I am Sira Cressless, a second-year student and a newly appointed member of the student council, she stated, her tone composed and confident. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Rimuru Lewin. The enigmatic smile lingered upon her lips, a mysterious aura surrounding her as she stood before me. Eleanor Lewin Pav, young lady, you should calm down a little, Julia said, my and Lily's personal maid as she gently straightened the collar of my crisp, navy uniform. Her voice flowed with a soothing melody, yet beneath the gentle tone, her words held an underlying firmness. Julia had been a cherished member of our household for years, more like a big sister than a maid. I fidgeted with my pleated skirt, the fine fabric feeling slightly rough against my restless fingertips. I sat on the edge of my neatly made bed, my excitement dangerously close to boiling over. I can't help it, Julia, I replied, my voice trembling with a mix of anticipation and nervousness. Today is finally the day I get to see the academy and train under the director Goodski, and big brother Ree said he would personally train me too. Julius' warm smile melted away any traces of impatience I had displayed. Her eyes crinkled at the corners, radiating genuine care and understanding. I know, my dear, she said, her voice softening to a whisper. But remember, patience is a virtue. Rushing into things may not always yield the best outcomes. Her words hung over the room like a comforting lullaby, urging me to take a deep breath in an attempt to rein in my unruly emotions. Julius' wisdom struck a chord within me, rushing would only hinder my progress. I needed to be patient, to take each step as it came. I know, Julia, I responded, determination lacing my words. I'll try to calm down and take things as they come. A nod of approval accompanied Julius' deft hands which expertly smoothed out any creases and adjusted the fit of my uniform. Her touch was like a mother's gentle caress, grounding me and igniting a sense of composure. That's the spirit, Eleanor, Julia murmured, her voice a whisper of encouragement. Just remember to trust in yourself and have confidence in your abilities. After a final adjustment to my uniform, 
I stood tall and straightened my posture. A newfound sense of calm settled within me. A gift from Julia's soothing presence. Thank you, Julia, I said gratefully, a genuine smile curving my lips. I truly don't know what I would do without you. Julia chuckled, her laughter carrying a soft melody of affection. Her eyes sparkled with love and pride as she regarded me. Oh, you'll do just fine, my dear. You have the Lewin resilience running through your veins. With Julia's gentle encouragement lingering like a protective hug, I descended the grand staircase, my heart dancing with a whirlwind of emotions. My small bag, filled with essentials and hopes, clung tightly to my side. As I rounded the banister, my parents stood at the foot of the stairs, waiting to bid me farewell. My father's warm smile eased any remnants of anxiety, his outstretched hand a welcoming gesture. Good luck, my dear Ellie, he said, his voice embodying a swell of pride. I have no doubt that you will flourish at the academy. Accepting my father's hand, our fingers interlaced in a comforting grip. Thank you, father, I replied, determination lacing every word. I will make you proud. My mother placed a tender hand on my shoulder. Her voice whispered sweet melodies of love and support. Remember, Ellie, the most important thing is to stay true to yourself, she said, her brown eyes shimmering with maternal affection. Embrace your individuality and let your light shine. I nodded, the weight of their love and guidance like a protective shield around me. I will. Mama, I assured her, my voice carrying a firmness of conviction. I won't lose sight of who I am. Aunt Tabitha's sprightly smile bloomed mischievously as she reached out to affectionately ruffle my hair. Off to the academy, little Ellie. She teased, a warmth radiating from her playful eyes. I giggled, playfully swatting Aunt Tabitha's hand away. Yes, Aunt Tabitha, I replied, a sparkle of excitement dancing in my eyes. With affectionate farewells and well wishes echoing in my ears, I stepped outside to find the waiting carriage, resplendent in its gleaming ebony paint. Julia's reassuring presence accompanied me, guiding me into the carriage with a comforting touch. As we embarked on the journey towards the academy, the scenery flashing by like a vibrant tapestry of possibility, my heart carried both the weight of responsibility and the flutter of exhilaration. Arriving at the prestigious academy, my eyes widened in awe at the grandeur of the towering stone buildings that lined the sprawling campus. The architectural masterpieces seemed to reach for the sky their intricate carvings and imposing presence leaving me breathless. The energy in the air crackled with anticipation, as if the very atmosphere was charged with excitement. Julia stepped out of the ornate carriage before me with graceful poise. She extended her hand towards me, an unspoken offer to help steady my nerves. Grateful for her support, I accepted her gesture, feeling a surge of gratitude and warmth course through me. Her presence alone felt like a shield against the nervousness threatening to overwhelm me. As soon as my feet touched the ground, I was met with the sight of my beloved older brother, Rimuru, leaning casually against the towering iron gate. His arms were crossed in front of his chest, a gentle smile playing upon his lips, and his clear, gold eyes twinkling with warmth and affection. My heart skipped a beat at the sight of him, and I couldn't help but let out an exuberant cry. Big brother! I screamed unable to contain my excitement. Ignoring the curious glances from passers-by, I launched myself towards him, my joy propelling me forward. I missed you. Big Brother Rimuru effortlessly caught me in his strong embrace, his smile widening at my impulsive display of affection. We were together yesterday, Ellie, he said with a chuckle, his voice laced with amusement. Pouting, I stuck out my bottom lip in mock indignation. But it felt like an eternity. I exclaimed, my voice filled with playful drama. I couldn't wait to see you again. Rimuru's laughter echoed through the air. He held me tightly, as if cherishing the moment as much as I did. I missed you too, Ellie, he replied. Just then, Julia approached us, her movements graceful and composed. She bowed deeply to my brother, her respect and admiration evident in her every gesture. Good day, Master Rimuru, she greeted respectfully, her voice holding a tinge of formality. Rimuru grinned at Julia. Good day, Julia, he replied, his tone affectionate and playful. Thank you for taking care of my little sister. It's my pleasure, Master Rimuru, Julia responded, her voice filled with utmost respect. I will do my best to ensure her happiness and well-being. Rimuru nodded approvingly, finally releasing me from his comforting embrace. I trust you will, Julia, 
he said, his voice holding confidence. Now, let's go. With that, he gestured for us to follow as he confidently led the way into the academy. Julia and I followed closely behind my big brother, our steps barely making a sound on the quiet campus. Contrary to my expectations, the grounds were peaceful and devoid of the usual hustle and bustle of students. Only a handful of figures could be spotted in the distance. Most of the students are in their classes right now, so it's quiet, Julia whispered softly, her voice barely above a whisper, easily masked by the shuffling of our feet. I nodded in understanding, taking in the serene atmosphere that enveloped us. Cynthia is a little busy now, so we'll go to my training room, my brother chimed in, his voice cutting through the silence. We continued to follow him silently and calmly, our curiosity growing as he led us toward the library building. My brow furrowed as confusion washed over me. Aren't we going to a training room? I couldn't help but ask, my voice tinged with curiosity. Yes, the training room is located beneath the library, he explained, pointing towards an entrance discreetly tucked away on the other side of the library's main entrance. As we stepped inside, a sense of anticipation filled the air. The corridor stretched out before us, the subdued lighting casting shadows against the walls. We walked further, our footsteps echoing on the polished floor until we finally reached the end of the hallway. My eyes fixed upon the imposing double doors that stood before us, their surface smooth and unblemished, without any handles in sight. My brother's hand gently landed on the doors, seeping warmth into the cool surface. A cacophony of noises erupted, as the area beneath his palm ignited in a brilliant display. Ribbons of light extended outwards, their radiance captivating to behold. Slowly, the lights dimmed, and the doors gracefully slid open, revealing a scene that instantly stole my breath away. The room that lay before me was a marvel unlike anything I had ever seen. It was a testament to the Academy's unwavering dedication to excellence. Julia stood by my side, her eyes mirroring the astonishment that painted my own face. Stepping forward cautiously, the doors closed behind us, effectively cutting off the outside world. The floor beneath my feet transformed into lush grass, soft and inviting. My attention was immediately drawn to the large pond that glistened in the sunlight, a magnificent waterfall cascading down its rocky wall. Towering boulders and majestic trees surrounded us, lending an air of tranquility and awe. Above us, crystalline adorned the ceiling, their glimmer lending an ethereal quality to the space. It felt as if we had stepped into a dream, a secret paradise hidden beneath the confines of the academy. Rimuru confidently strode into the room, gesturing for us to follow suit. Obediently, we trailed behind, our gazes transfixed by the wonders that lay before us. Excitement coursed through my veins, anticipation building with every passing second. Breathtaking. I couldn't contain my awe any longer, my joyous exclamation echoing through the enchanting room. Rimuru chuckled, his voice rich with satisfaction. I'm glad you think so, Ellie. This room is infused with mana, which will greatly aid your progress. Only me, Arctess, and Lily can enter this room, along with Seal and Sylvia, he shared, providing insight into the exclusivity of the room. Rimuru had always been enigmatic about his abilities and the true extent of his powers. It made sense that this special training room was reserved for a select few. As we continued to explore, Rimuru pointed out different areas of interest. There were practice dummies for combat training, a spacious area for sparring matches, and even a small garden for cultivating herbs and plants with magical properties. As Rimuru spoke, his words flowing like a lyrical melody, I listened attentively, eagerly absorbing every detail he shared. The very thought of harnessing magic and wielding it in combat sent a shiver of excitement down my spine. It was a whole new world of possibilities that lay before me, waiting to be explored and conquered. Julia, why don't you and Ellie start with some basic magic exercises? Rimuru suggested, gesturing towards my maid. I'll be here to observe and provide guidance. Of course, Master, Julia responded politely, her eyes lighting up with anticipation. Shall we, Ellie? She asked, extending her hand towards me. I eagerly took hold of her hand, feeling a surge of exhilaration coursing through my veins. Together, Julia and I ventured towards the area designated for magic practice. Rimuru followed closely behind, his presence reassuring and comforting. As we reached the marked spot on the soft grass, Julia released my hand and turned to face me, a warm smile gracing her lips. 
Her voice carried a gentle excitement as she declared that my training had officially begun. After one hour, Rimuru Pav I sank into the plush velvet chair, my eyes fixated on my sister, Ellie, and Julia as they engaged in their training session. The air around them seemed to crackle with a palpable energy, creating an electric atmosphere in the room. Beside me, Cynthia had just arrived, her eyes sparkling with curiosity as she observed their elemental manifestations. Cynthia leaned in closer, her voice filled with genuine interest. Has your sister discovered her elemental affinity yet? She inquired, her tone laced with intrigue. I shook my head, a hint of pride seeping into my words. Not yet, I replied, my voice tinged with anticipation. But she possesses an incredible talent for manipulating pure mana. In that aspect, she is as gifted as Sylvie. Fascination danced in Cynthia's eyes as she absorbed this newfound information. A slight smile played at the corners of her lips as she remarked, I see. And who might this maid be? She exudes a remarkable strength. An enigmatic smile formed on my lips as I reflected on Cynthia's limited knowledge of my recent ventures. She's one of us, I responded cryptically, trusting that Cynthia would grasp the implications hidden within my words. Recognition sparked in Cynthia's eyes as she understood the underlying meaning. We exchanged knowing glances, silently acknowledging the shared secrets concealed within our seemingly ordinary conversation. Rising from my seat, I announced, Anyway, I'll leave Ellie in your hands. I have a class to attend. Cynthia nodded in understanding, mirroring my actions by standing up as well. Very well, she replied with a sense of responsibility evident in her tone. Her determination to guide and train Ellie shone through her words. Turning my attention back to Ellie and Julia, I beckoned them to approach me, as they curiously made their way towards me, their eyes brimming with questions, Ellie's voice filled with excitement and anticipation. What is it, Big Brother Rimuru? she asked eagerly. A warm smile adorned my face as I addressed them both. Ellie, you've seen her before, but you were younger back then. Allow me to reintroduce Cynthia Goodsky, the director of this academy. Julia offered a respectful bow, and Ellie followed suit. It's a pleasure to meet you, Director Goodsky. I'm looking forward to training under your guidance, Ellie expressed with an air of respect and enthusiasm in her voice. Cynthia reciprocated their polite gestures with a warm, kind smile. The pleasure is all mine, she replied genuinely. I've heard remarkable things about your dedication to training, and I'm truly excited to witness the heights you can achieve. Radiance illuminated Ellie's face as she absorbed Cynthia's encouraging words. Thank you, she responded, anticipation evident in her voice. Cynthia's laughter bubbled forth, resonating with amusement. Well then, let's not waste any more time. Shall we begin? She proposed eagerly, her voice a delightful mix of playfulness and determination. With a final nod of assurance to Ellie and Julia, I signaled that it was time for Julia and me to depart. All right then, Julia and I will take our leave, I declared. Ellie's brows furrowed slightly, a hint of disappointment coloring her expression. Aren't you staying? She questioned, her voice tinged with a touch of longing. I affectionately ruffled Ellie's hair, offering reassurance. I still have classes to attend, and Julia has her own duties to fulfill, I explained gently. Understanding filtered through Ellie's features, her disappointment fading into acceptance. I see, she murmured softly, a touch of wistfulness in her voice. Julia stepped forward, addressing Ellie with a tender smile. Don't worry, little lady. I'll come here whenever I get the chance, she promised soothingly. A flicker of hope reignited in Ellie's eyes as Julia's words washed over her. Thank you, Julia. I'll be eagerly awaiting your return, she exclaimed, her voice filled with renewed enthusiasm. With one final upbringing of Ellie's hair, Julia turned her attention to Cynthia. I entrust the little lady to your capable hands, Director Goodsky. Take good care of her, she requested sincerely. Cynthia nodded, her gaze filled with warmth and reassurance. You can count on me. I will ensure that Ellie reaches her fullest potential. As Julia and I made our departure, leaving Ellie and Cynthia alone in the training room, the sound of our footsteps echoed softly in the marble hallway. Master, Julia whispered, her voice barely audible above the hushed tones, as if she feared eavesdroppers. Her pink locks, intricately woven into an elegant braid, framed her delicate features, accentuating the softness in her eyes. I couldn't help but overhear. Is it true that Lloyd and the two girls are here? I slowed my pace 
turning to face Julia and my eyes sparkled with a mix of amusement and warmth. Yes, they are indeed here, I affirmed, unable to suppress a hidden smile that played at the corners of my lips. Is there a reason for your sudden interest? A gentle breeze swept through the corridor, causing Julia's hair to sway gracefully around her shoulders as she paused, her gaze distant yet filled with fondness. I suppose. I suppose I can't help but marvel at how swiftly time has flown by, she mused softly, her voice carrying a hint of melancholy. It feels like just yesterday when they were mere children, dependent on others for guidance, and now. Now they are attending the most esteemed academy on the entire continent. I nodded in agreement, captivated by Julia's nostalgic tone and the subtle glow of her eyes. Indeed, they have grown in leaps and bounds, I conceded, my voice filled with a blend of affection and pride. It is nothing short of miraculous how swiftly time elapses, isn't it? Julia's head bobbed in sync with my words, her expression pensive as she delved deep into her cherished memories. Her pink eyes sparkled with a quiet wonder. It truly is, she whispered, a hint of awe coloring her voice. I recall Lloyd, with his mischievous days, forever finding himself entangled in one scrape after another. And those two girls, Anna and Lena, they were inseparable companions, their laughter echoing through the corridors. They have traversed such a remarkable journey. My mind wandered back to those simpler times, bathed in the golden hues of nostalgia. They have indeed, I concurred, a wistful sigh escaping my lips. But it is their dedication and unyielding efforts that have propelled them to where they stand today. I cannot help but feel an overwhelming surge of pride for their accomplishments. Basking in the shared sentiment, a gentle breeze rustling the hems of our garments, I sensed the weight of reminiscence take hold of us. A mischievous glint sparkled in my eyes as I decided to break the enchanting spell. Ah, Julia, dwelling in the past does tend to make us appear more seasoned, doesn't it? I quipped, a hint of a smirk tugging at the corners of my lips, eliciting a harmonious chuckle from both of us. Realizing the fleeting nature of such tender moments, Julia gracefully dipped into a bow. Then, Master, I shall take my leave now, she declared her voice carrying a genuine sincerity that warmed the chambers of my heart. I wish you the very best of fortune in your endeavors. Thank you, Julia, I responded, a hint of a smile playing upon my lips, I appreciate your well wishes. And with that, Julia glided away, her impeccable figure blending seamlessly into the ethereal ambiance of the academy, leaving me to continue on my solitary path. Gazing ahead, my thoughts lingered on the upcoming, practical monomanipulation, class. A sigh escaping my lips as I contemplated Cynthia's reasoning for making it mandatory. Why did Cynthia choose to make such a class mandatory? I pondered aloud, the weight of curiosity mingling with a tinge of exasperation.